All right. So, hello. <laughs> um, I am here with Taj Mattingly, and I am super excited to talk to him. Um, and this is our Creative Conversation series. Um, my name is Allison Bowman, and I am the Administrative Assistant for the Arts Council of Johnson County. And thank you, everybody, for joining us and for watching. Um, so, Tosh, <laughs> how are Hi. you? <laughs> Hi, I'm doing great. Uh, you know, enjoying actual winter starting, which is yeah. weird since we had 70 degree days in the beginning of December. Right, Question like mark? third summer. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it was Free absurd. Spring. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, pre-spring. That feels way better than yeah. when is winter. <laughs> <Probably> more summer. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Oh, man. Well, um, let's jump in and let's talk about uh, your background and kind of what you started out doing and how you got to what you're doing now. Yeah, sure. Um, I started out as an illustrator. Uh, I went to the Kansas City Art Institute because uh, they had a really great illustration program there. Uh, I had been studying art since I was a really young child, and I kind of always knew that was what I wanted to do. Uh, and illustration seemed like uh, the right step for me because I, I really was focused on techniques and, and learning how to paint representationally and with a lot of different styles. And I thought that uh, illustration would just keep me drawing. And, you know, it worked out. I, I did that for a long time, worked for a lot of different companies doing everything from fashion design to uh, fashion illustration, which was really weird. Uh, not something I had a background in, but I really enjoyed it for a while. Uh, I did uh, some signage and graphic work. I mean, it, it, it was a range and, and it was fun to be able to work on different projects for different people. But I, I had never really broken out on my own and done my own thing. And I really wanted to do that. So it was um, summer of 2016 when I uh, decided to quit all my full-time jobs and just go out and be a freelance artist full-time. It was, it was kind of a scary decision, but it was the right time to do it. Uh, I had a client that, uh, you know, had a, a summer job that would really kind of take me over the edge. And I was like, yeah, this is going to be great. So, yeah, I was just going to do... Uh, yeah, work with a couple of clients, do editorial work and, and things like that. It was a, it was a really fun time. Nice. Um, and you, do you have a background in illustration and graphic design or just illustration? Yeah, both. Um, it kind of came hand in hand with, at the Art Institute. It, it, they really kind of paired those two. Now, I think, or at least after that, it was pairing illustration with animation and they, okay. they kind of went in that direction. But uh, at the time that I was going, it was really paired with graphic design and typography and all kinds of different little specialties that used to be, you know, broken apart and for a lot of different reasons. But I, I really wanted to try all kinds of different stuff. And uh, graphic work tended to pay the bills pretty regularly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so summer of 2016, you quit your jobs, you are now a full-time artist. How did yeah. that go? <laughs> well, it, it had its uh, bumps here and there. Uh, I had an accident in the summer of 2016 where my dominant hand was crushed uh, between a rock and a hard place. And it was unfortunate because uh, I could no longer use it to work. And that was really all I had. Uh, so I had to quickly kind of think on my feet, figure out what, what it was I wanted to do, uh, realized I couldn't read or write all that well. So I would just have to train my non-dominant hand to do what I used to be able to do with my dominant hand and uh, just started working towards that. Uh, it took a little while in the beginning just to kind of like figure out what I was doing. And I started with a lot of large scale abstract work because, you know, it was mark making and mark making is, is about at the base of what I did as an illustrator. You made marks and eventually they added up to an image. And I figured if I could start controlling the marks that I was making, I would eventually get back to being able to make an image that I liked. Yeah. So now you do, you, you do all of your work with your left hand? I actually can switch it up, but the good news is uh, I will be, I do my daily series with my left and I, I have a hard time with my right only because uh, it, the accident left 
me with a, a plate and nine pins. So I can't really hold pens or brushes the way that I used to, but I've found different ways that I can use my hand, just not kind of the way that I used to. So I can semi use it and I, I've now got my left, to, you know, do some dancing. It's uh, it's pretty nice. Right. Um, uh, so what kind of, like, what do I want to ask? Oh, um, <laughs> so you, you, you mentioned your daily series. So was that daily drawings and paintings to build up strength in your non-dominant hand? Yeah, it was uh, right at the beginning of 2017. Uh, I had taken a few months to kind of figure out what I wanted to do, uh, worked on a couple pieces here and there, and I realized that I wanted to get back to representational work. And the only way to do that was the way that I did it the first time with practice. Uh, I was, you know, a very uh, artistic kid, but it wasn't, you know, what a lot of people would call natural talent. I feel like it was really studied. Uh, I realized my faults as an artist and I, and I did my best to kind of improve on those things. And it took years to get to the place that I was. And I realized that it would just take a fast track version of that to get back to that place. Cause I had already done all the work in my head, but yeah, I had to do that leg work. And yeah. uh, I decided that the daily series was the best way to do it. You know, create a, a daily work on paper, regardless of any other assignments, anything else I had going on, any work, uh, I would just do a daily piece uh, for myself uh, to get back to that place. And now I'm at uh, around 1450 or so and uh yeah it's it's paid dividends and i wish i had started years before but all i can say is for anybody who makes work uh try to try to do a little something for yourself every day it really makes a difference and, it, and you kind of hold yourself accountable and it might might feel like it's taking away but in the end when you look back and you realize you've been doing it for this long and you have this kind of uh physical body of work to show for it. Uh, it's very rewarding, uh, especially after, you know, a long time not really producing at that level. It was, it was very nice. Yeah. So your, your daily series, are you painting those or drawing or both? Or so yeah. it's, it's uh, I do my daily series uh, on paper uh, and it is kind of a combination of drawing and painting. I, I generally call them drawings because uh, you know, the materials that I'm using. Uh, but some would say paintings, uh, I use gouache, ink, uh, occasionally acrylic. It just depends on kind of the day, the subject matter and what it is that I'm trying to get across. Uh, for a long time, it was really pretty strict. It was uh, ink and on paper. And uh, I did a lot of black and white because, you know, when I first started creating artwork, it, it was, uh, it's a tool used to really get down to the base of a piece. You, you tend to strip away all the noise of color and flash and light. And if you get a black and white image correct, it, it, it conveys a lot. And, and so I really wanted to make sure that I was getting that core, that base down before I moved on. And then I started, you know, adding a lot of color, um, you know, messing with techniques that I hadn't played with in years, trying new things. And I think that's been one of the best parts of the daily series is that I, I try a lot of new things. Uh, and it's a great time to experiment because, you know, nobody really is holding me accountable for it except for myself. Uh, it, it tends to help my business, but in the end, it, it is just kind of a private study that I post publicly. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. And you post them every day and it's, it's amazing. Um, yeah. I, I try to keep to that schedule. It's definitely, you know, I haven't missed a day since I started and I hope not to miss a day until I can't do it anymore. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so what kind of subject matters do you typically paint? I've seen a lot of animals, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Animals really took over. Um, because it was a daily series, it really didn't start off having a direction. It was just kind of like, I'm going to do a piece on paper. I know that. And I wanted to keep it that wide open so that it could kind of evolve on its own. I grew up in uh, DC. And uh, when I was in eighth grade, I ended up going to uh, a private school called the Field School. And it was a weird school. I was only there for a year 
turns out like, you know, you take some tests, they think you're one way, you go to a school for kids that are way smarter than you. And you're just like, I shouldn't be here. I like <laughs> to draw stuff. And they're like, yeah. yes, you go draw things. But in the <laughs> meantime, uh, one of the bus stops uh, on the Metro was at the uh, Woodley Park Zoo, which was a national zoo. And uh, going to the national zoo was, was pretty amazing. You got to interact with, uh, animals that, you know, you would never interact with on your daily life. And, and, you know, that, that zoo very specifically took amazing care and, and had, you know, such a, such a beautiful, uh, environment for all the, the animals that they cared for. And I really kind of was influenced by that. It, it comes out now, uh, you know, Kansas City has an amazing zoo. And, and for some reason, the animals always stood out to me uh, as subject matter. Uh, I, I had done a lot of portraits and, and used people as subject matter when I was in yeah. illustration. It, it just kind of was part of what I did for work. Uh, did a whole lot of portraits all the time. I, yeah. I tended to be pretty good at it. It was uh, something I could, I could capture the way that people looked. I could give them a little bit of emotion I could really make it appropriate for whatever setting it was supposed to be in and I did everything from like internet poker players on blogs with like really really small pieces that were simple to you know large paintings and all kinds of stuff it was it was fun to do but when I was getting back to representational work I knew that portraits are tricky uh you you know you have one line out of place and it's really going to show you know, you're going to be able to tell. And I and I was very self-conscious about like diving back into that world because, you know, when you when you aren't able to do the things that you used to do technically, uh, you really have to rethink the way that you're drawing from the ground up. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the times, the way that I build pieces in my head now I have to take into account the techniques I'm going to use, the materials I'm going to use. And, and it was very, very present in the forefront of my head, but I wanted to get back to portrait work eventually. And I thought the perfect subject would be animals because every once in a while, <laughs> they, they are just as expressive and emotive as, as humans. We are animals uh, and people aren't as critical when it comes to uh, animal portraits, especially animal portraits that aren't specific animals. You know, if I'm just working on, uh, you know, trying to get a panda correct, mm -hmm. uh, like something might be a little bit off, but it's really not going to instantly turn people off. Right. Uh, and eventually those little mistakes are going to kind of build up to look correct. <laughs> and, and that was mostly where my daily series ended up. I ended up working on animal artwork and animals became my subject matter uh it it allowed me a lot of leeway and it allowed i think the way that i needed to move the brush to fit the subject matter yeah awesome um so we see a few paintings in in your background but do you want to check out your website oh yeah sure I mean, you have seen your website, obviously. We will check out. I've your seen website. it before. I've seen it before. I, and I'm not going to lie. It has been a while since it's been updated, but I do have, in fact, some work up there. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll take a quick look um, because I really like, <laughs> I like your self-portrait a lot. So I want to show that. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. Screen sharing. Can you see it? I can't yet. Oh, hey, there it is. Awesome. Okay. Me. <laughs> Look. <laughs> I love it. Um, so where does the zombie come from in zombie Taj? <laughs> so uh, years and years ago, I started a company with a group of friends called Visual Domination Studios. Uh, it was a place where a bunch of artists and illustrators who all knew each other went to college together friends uh decided to just set up shop uh we could all work on individual projects and then, then if group things came up we would kind of share if there was a specialty that one of us had that the other didn't we would be able to uh you know work on different things together and uh it really turned into uh, a great place for individual projects and one of those things was uh zombie jacks 
it was a poker apparel company because several of us played poker and we realized there wasn't really a lot of good poker gear out there for people and so we designed some stuff through some skulls and some spades on things and printed up some shirts and ran some poker games and had a lot of fun for for a while uh and yeah zombie jacks was the company that we started and so uh zombie taj kind of came out of that it was just you know one of those things we all were and it, it became a handle i think at the time so nice. you know rebranding a business probably yeah. not the best but i did keep it because i think it's fun you know, <laughs> it remembers it remembers who i used to be plus every yeah. once in a while i think about like rebirth and you know at this point i feel like a zombie half the time it's great you know <laughs> <laughs> it works <laughs> yeah it does it's very appropriate i love it all right let's go let's check out your gallery yeah do you have all your well maybe not all of your daily works but do you put them on your website or is that mostly an instagram no uh, i do have a few you can see a couple of the daily pieces there but uh mostly i keep uh my daily work to instagram uh at some point i'm going to either archive it or uh find a new place to uh platform it but for now uh it keeps me accountable uh i have decent interaction there i like to you know meet other artists uh meet collectors meet people who you know might be looking for this work specifically it's a really interesting uh dynamic social media <laughs> You, you end up in a weird, weird place uh, a lot of the time, but for artists, it tends to be a good place to meet customers, a good place to interact with other artists and work on collaboration because you never know who you're going to run into and, and be able to actually talk with uh, on social media. Yeah. Yeah, you never know who's going to see your work. Some people are like, oh, Taylor Swift just liked my art. It's like, right. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's funny. I, I have a friend who's an illustrator and, you know, we've followed each other's feeds for, for years. And he did a portrait of Ryan Reynolds the other day. And I saw his feed explode because, you know, <laughs> Ryan Reynolds reposted his drawing and was like, hey, thanks for doing it. You get one repost from somebody, you get one share yeah. and and it changes kind of your career basically mm -hmm. because you're exposed to so many more people than you ever would have been before yeah it's pretty crazy how quickly it changes so here's some portraits oh. yeah i mean a lot of these were early daily drawings uh yeah some of the black and white animals and the ballerinas i had been approached by a gallery to uh work on some commissions of ballerina work and so i did a whole series of studies. When I was first drawing again, storms became a, an early subject matter for me because they were, uh, again, easy to blend that line between uh, representational and abstraction. Uh, yeah. Storms allow you to kind of go crazy and do weird different things. Yeah, I mean, anything really is believable when it comes to like a tornado. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Things go in all kinds of directions. Uh -huh. <laughs> all right. So here's more storms. Some yeah, storms and some explosions. Uh, Are they charcoal? That, uh, yeah, they're graphite, charcoal, turpentine, uh, I, chalk. Yeah, a lot of mixed media involved in these. Uh, it was an early technique I learned from, uh, I believe, Mark English when i was at the illustration academy he was showing some uh techniques where he would paint with tar and Ooh. and move push materials around and do really weird things and, and it always stuck with me is like thinking about materials differently and and using different combinations of materials to to give you a, a desired outcome and not to be afraid of you know messing around and trying something different yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Plus, you can get super emotional and throw things when you're playing with charcoal and turpentine. It's nice. Sure. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, so these are the abstract ones that you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, this is a lot of the early work. Uh, as you can see, you know, just trying to figure out how to, you know, get lines to go where you wanted them to go. And for me, a lot of these came out of a desire to paint like this uh before the accident 
Mm. I actually have about half a dozen, six pieces or so in this series that were painted uh, before the accident. And it was uh, something I had wanted to do for a long time. And after I had the accident, it really was uh, an appropriate series to continue with uh, yeah. because I felt like it was uh, uh, both emotionally speaking to where I was at at the time, but also uh, really giving me that technical platform I needed to you know communicate with art the way that I used to even though it's a very different subject matter right yeah um can we go to your shop <laughs> <laughs> wow you oh. can't go to the shop <laughs> okay. yeah this shop yeah sorry about that no, it's fine. Uh, this yeah this shop used to be I used to have an Etsy shop I used to do uh, some prints through them and it's actually an interesting thing because I got asked about it a lot doing prints but because of the work that I do uh, now on my daily series I tend to not work on prints uh, it it takes away from the original work that I do and uh, it's not something I am completely you know against I think that there are plenty of uh, people who make good prints and there are plenty of companies that do good work in that, you know, field. But for me, uh, until I get to a place where I can make actual archival prints or things that I could give to a client to feel good about, as opposed to an original piece of work, uh, I don't think I'll be doing that type of, uh, sales anymore. Yeah, that's fair. It's good to know what you want and what you're good at. And yeah, I definitely, Totally agree with the original piece being kind of special. And then when you make prints of it, it's, I don't know, it's a little different. It is. I mean, and it works for certain people. And I definitely there's a digital work that needs printed regardless. Mm -hmm. right. uh, but I, I try to have a range in both price and in stature of work. You know, I have work on paper that will start at, you know, 50 bucks, something that people mm -hmm. can give as gifts, something that people could, you know, take home and start collecting. Uh, even if you don't have, you know, a massive bank account and you're ready to start buying Banksy work or, or whatever, like, you know, people want to have artwork in their home and they don't often have all the money in the world to do it. So I, I when I first started making the large scale canvas work, I, I was working with galleries. And when you're working with galleries, you kind of have uh, expectations on their end of uh, how profitable a piece needs to be for them to sell it. Uh, and so when you're working with galleries and they're selling your work, it hits a certain price point. And so I like to have work that is available to sell uh, at galleries where I can, you know, pay a commission and still not be paying. <laughs> <laughs> but I like to have work on paper that I can sell and and it's not gonna you know break your back if you take it home yeah. it's a nice thing to do because i i tend to create a lot of new collectors that way it's very very different but it, it feels great when you get somebody who's you know never collected work before but comes back to a show that you're doing a year later and picks up a new piece it's just uh it's really touching and and very nice yeah that's awesome um do you do a lot of like art fairs and that kind of thing? So I did uh, early on, uh, first couple of years that I was doing this, I did Westport and a few different local fairs. Uh, I went out to Art on the Creeks in um, Arkansas, which was great. Uh, and I'd love to do it again. And we had planned on doing uh, another show in Arkansas uh, in 2020, but oddly, we had a little hiccup and that, and that's really been the last couple of years. Uh, fairs are starting to trickle back, but I, um, I had COVID when it first started, I've been fully vaccinated and it's one of those things that I'm not sure how the world is getting back to a decent place, especially as variants come out and, you know, it never feels like shows and art fairs are back to the level that it was pre-pandemic 
And again, it's not to say that the pandemic is over. It's just to say that like we are entering a place where we can do these fairs. I've done a couple outdoor first Fridays and things of that nature. And it's again, great to interact with people, but they're just not, um, they're not the same as they were before, which mm -hmm. is, I guess, expected. But also, I guess, I'm not sure when they'll be that way again. You know, like, is this next summer going to be a year for it to kind of really all come back after? Because last year, art fairs were back. I saw Westport doing pretty well. And I, I had a few friends who were there. And, you know, they did the Plaza and Brookside and, you know, did decent uh, for sure. But yeah. I'm not sure. I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get, I mean, we'll see. We'll have to see and find out. But yeah, I started doing yeah. art fairs in March of this year. Mm -hmm. So I never, I didn't do them pre-COVID <laughs> and I didn't do them dirt. Like, I mean, we're still during COVID, but yeah. kind of that weird, like, I don't know. Just It's just kind of weird. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, we are in that kind of half place, and I mean, the fairs are back, and and it is a decent time to get out because if you can, get out and do it. But yeah, it it still just has that like odd feeling. And again, first Friday is in December. It was seventy degrees, so we had a lot of weird stuff. With yeah, that is seventy true. degree weather. What's happening? You know, I know. I did a I did a I did strawberry swings merry market last weekend and mm -hmm. it was so cold oh my gosh i was so <laughs> jealous of everybody who did them like the three weekends before <laughs> like this is so unfair but, yeah yeah it's a uh, really hit or miss this time of year and it shouldn't be that way but it is it's weird yeah. <laughs> you get the yeah. 70 degree days and then you'll get the you know 30 it's not all right that's right. not cool <laughs> it was not it was not but it was a good it was a good time I met a lot of cool people, so. Yeah, I like that show. It's fun. And yeah. I love that about art fairs. You get a lot of, you get a chance to chat with a lot of people and interact with a lot of different artists that you wouldn't have interacted with uh, in any other circumstance. Exactly. Um, speaking of interacting with artists, um, do we want to talk about your Cold Stream Tales project? Oh, sure. Yeah, that'd be great. I don't really know much about it. I've I've seen things that you've posted on social media. Do you want to just give us a little background about sure. it? Sure. Yeah, I'd love to talk about it. Uh, Cold Stream Tales is something that uh, I started, man, feels like feels like yesterday, but it's also <laughs> been, uh, man, over a year now. We've uh, we decided that we wanted to tell some children's stories. Uh, initially, I was approached to do uh, some illustration for it. I felt... At the time, it was perfect. Uh, the pandemic was was in, and I had, you know, dropped all the gallery shows I was doing. Uh, couldn't really figure out where to be showing my work live, mm -hmm. and the opportunity to do some illustration work was perfect. You know, I, I felt like I could draw representationally again, and I could, you know, get back to at least telling the stories that I used to be able to tell comfortably and so when I was first approached I thought this will be great uh do some drawings and we'll be done uh but as we got to talking it, the project itself really grew uh out of a desire to tell a couple of stories uh to building an entire world that we could tell some stories in uh my partners are really interesting and different um Karen is a speech language pathologist and, and and always worked with children so it was a natural kind of place for her to want to go she always wanted to tell these types of stories and and you know stories that would impact the development of children and, and help them kind of grow and be more comfortable with themselves uh so for her it was a natural thing and her husband uh jesse uh, as a programmer it really decided we're going to give this a different kind of platform. Uh, we want to go outside of the realm of pages and books to interactive media, to media that really transcends uh, what we thought of before, not just telling stories with flat pictures. We may add animation. We may add voiceover. We may add music. All of these things started to build up as we were uh, creating a world. And the world itself uh, started to 
be more interesting for us, mm -hmm. even though we had only told some very, very basic stories, introducing a few characters. Um, we really have done a ton of work in, in the background to build up this world as not only something for people to dive into, but for artists to expand for us. Uh, I have always thought that, you know, this world is so interesting. I don't want to be the one telling all the stories that are in it because uh, I'm much more interested in things that other people bring to the table. Mm -hmm. Like I, I enjoy the things I bring to the table, but working with people from different backgrounds tend to enhance whatever story you're working on. So for us, the goal with Coldstream is to build a world and a platform that has amazing characters and tells stories that kind of weave together and and really help with some developmental uh issues that that kids have and that parents have with raising children and in the end we want to then give that to other artists to help tell those stories in ways that we couldn't have imagined in the beginning very cool sounds awesome um, yeah it's a whole lot of fun <laughs> yeah does and it lives online right it's like its own it currently lives online um we have our first book it's out and if you go to coldstreamtales.com you can check out uh all the different uh stuff that we have going there there's backgrounds on all the people who started it uh we have some sneak peeks of upcoming projects uh right now we have a couple different books that we're developing and we're working on more world building but really what's amazing is we have composers uh these guys from spain who just make some beautiful music and uh, really add life to the project. It's, it's just kind of incredible to see what happens when, you know, you decide to work with people who are really driven and, and have the same kind of uh, goals and, and you get this beautiful outcome that you could just never have done on your own. It's really, really nice to do. I love collaborative work. Yeah, me too. I love different different ideas coming together to make something. Oh, for sure. Very cool. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I didn't know you guys had a book out, so I'm excited to see that. Yeah, check it out. It's a it's a whole lot of fun. The first book is, as I said, just an introduction of all the characters uh, in the world, and it tells a really nice story. And the cool thing about it is, it's a customizable book. So depending on who you are and who your child is, you can kind of custom make that book to fit. Cool, very cool. Um, well, is there anything else that you want to plug or talk about? Anything <laughs> coming up or? Man, uh, well, I've got some pieces at the Smalter Gallery right now. Their small work show is coming down, I uh, believe at the end of the month, but uh, we've been talking about doing some shows and maybe lighting some things on fire coming up this year. Ooh. uh not really sure we're working on the logistics of that fire is extremely <laughs> fun uh i tend to burn things often and uh, we're maybe thinking about doing that in public so i don't know cool yeah it could be a really cool thing that's awesome well thank you so much for taking the time to do a creative conversation and um yeah, I enjoyed learning more about you. I know we we did Art Distinct together in 2019. Yeah. That's how that's how we met. And yeah, I I mean, you get to know a little bit about everybody, but it's so much fun learning more about people's stories. Yeah, I love this format. It's a great, it's a great place to just kind of chat for a minute. I really like yeah. it. And you know, you get to feature people, you get to see cats. See I love cat? that. Ooh. Hey, listen, I'm just I'm just happy my dog is asleep in the other room. He probably yeah. would have his nose in the camera half this time if he <laughs> wasn't. So, <laughs> <Mine too. laughs> yeah, it's a good way to be. Let them sleep, right? Yeah, <laughs> just, just go over there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, and I'll thank let you, you back to your afternoon. So, um, good to talk to you, and we will see you soon. Yeah, it was great. We'll talk soon. Bye. Bye.